Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be looking at the best way of applying thermal paste for your CPU. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to apply thermal paste to your CPU and to make a good seal between your CPU cooler and the processor itself. Now there's gonna be a lot of you out there that are gonna be straight into the comments section saying, no, this is not the way to do it or whatever. Uh, feel free to try and change my mind. Now I've been applying CPU coolers for many, many years and use various different methods, uh, some with more consistency than others. But the one that I've found recently, which seems to work the best for a multitude of different reasons is actually using the spread method. Now already again, I can, I can always hear the keyboard clacking away. Now do bear with me, there are reasons for this. Now they're not always what you'd think they would be. Now you're probably looking at this video thinking it's gonna be all to do with temperatures. Now that is gonna come into it to some extent, but actually what I'm concentrating more on is actually ease of use. Now if I had a pang for every time that I heard that somebody removed their CPU cooler and the processors came out with the cooler because it was welded on, I'd be a relatively wealthy person. So if you want to avoid that happening in the future, if you adopt this method of applying thermal paste, in theory, your chances of that happening are seriously reduced. And for me personally, we do swap out a lot of coolers here on the channel, as you see, if you check out our CPU cooler playlist, you'll see we've done an awful lot of them. So I've learned a few tips and tricks along the way. So anyway, that is enough waffle, let's get into this. Now the first thing we're gonna be trying is obviously the thermal paste does come into it to some extent, consistency, all that kind of stuff. Now I'm gonna be using Arctic MX4, no other particular reason other than I've been using it quite a lot recently. I do get on with it quite well. It isn't very sticky, although it can be if you apply it incorrectly, so do bear that in mind. But overall, it's a very good performing paste and excellent value for money. And there will be affiliate links for it in the video description. For the installation, we're gonna be actually using a Ryzen 5 3600, which is pretty much one of the most popular of AMD's AM4 processors. If you're about to install your processor and you've got one of these coolers, the first thing I would do is remove the thermal compound which comes pre-applied. Uh, we'll, obviously you'll see why as we go through it, but actually that stuff effectively turns into glue very, very quickly and is gonna cause problems when you're trying to take your CPU cooler out. That is almost guaranteed. So we've got our donor system here. What I'll do is now I'll get the camera close so you can see exactly what I'm doing. We will be applying the thermal paste and using a spreader. Now, luckily for Arctic, they actually include one of these. If you don't have one handy, it's very easy to kind of get a makeshift one. There's all sorts of things you can do. Uh, you can use a credit card, those kinds of things. These actually do seem to be particularly good. They've got just about the right amount of strength and flexibility to make a really good application. So anyway, let's get a camera close up and we'll uh, give it a go. So here we have our Ryzen processor. We've got our close up now, so we're gonna apply our thermal paste, the MX4. And something that a lot of people get wrong on this is actually doing too much. So all we want is actually a very, very small amount. A very, very small amount. So as you can see, there is a, a pretty tiny amount. Now obviously, if you do too little, you can always add more and you can remove some. And you will find even with this kind of small amount, if I just turn it around a bit, you can get an idea of what it's like obviously in comparison, so essentially it's almost covering the uh, Z for Zen. That is pretty much all you need. Now we're gonna use our spreader and literally gonna spread it out from the center and then paste it all around. Using a little bit of pressure, as you can see, I'm really forcing that down. But what we're trying to aim for here is a very, very thin and fine layer. The reason behind that is because thermal compound, the whole idea of thermal compound is to just bridge the gap between the two pieces of metal. Now you should really, the two pieces of metal should be pretty much flat anyway. So this is just going in between and actually making the little holes, the microscopic holes, it's trying to fill those. And you'll find with this, as you work it more and more, it becomes less thick, the viscosity drops, and it'll spread out a little bit more. I 
And the more you do it, you'll see it spreads out closer and closer to those edges. And just try and do long, thin, evenly pressured strips. I'm taking a little bit longer about this than I would normally because I've used, actually I'll probably use a little bit too little. Could have probably used a little bit more. You can, of course, you can add a little bit more if you want to, but that is, I think, pretty much almost perfect. There is a little bit left on the, uh, the spatula, so if there are any areas which are a little bit underdone, we can just kind of fill those in a little bit. And now you can probably see that is very, very thin and very, very fine. I'm trying to get a good camera angle that. Hopefully you can get an idea there. That's actually, that's a, that's a pretty decent angle there. You can see from the sides. So it's just a really, really fine scraping on there. And that is literally all you need because under compression, Anything which is actually kind of slightly raised or in the way or basically too much will get squished out. So that is effectively it. That is all you need. You do not need a lot of thermal paste. Now quite often what we see happening is if you do use too much thermal paste, when the cooler actually gets put onto the processor, because it's going to squish out the excess, where you get the build up around the outside edges of the CPU and the cooler, there's a thicker edge all the way around, which uh, we're all used to seeing. And that is the bit which actually kind of glues the processor in. Because there's a very thin layer there, it's only gonna contact the areas where it needs to, which is ideally what thermal compounds should do. Now this actually obviously helps when you're removing the cooler as well, because you don't have that thick, gloopy layer around the outside edges and also on top of the CPU. And also another side effect is obviously if you're buying more expensive paste, such as Thermal Grizzly, those kinds of things, which obviously are quite expensive gram per gram, then you're going to save money and you're going to get more applications out of your CPU paste. Now, even with that small amount we use there, there is actually uh, a little bit left on the spatula. Not a great deal, so we haven't wasted any as such, or at least none that would really kind of make a massive difference. But certainly that is going to be a much better application. Thermally wise, I've done tests with the cross method, the dot method, the dab method, spreading it with my finger. In actual fact, the one spreading it with my finger is probably the one which is closest to this method, to be honest with you. So if you don't have a plastic spatula, if you wanna put on like a rubber glove or something and just spread the CPU thermal compound around, then you can do that as well. But certainly, please do let me know in the comments section what your thoughts are on this, and please feel free, give it a try, do your own test with your thermal pastes, try, the spread method, try the blob method, and actually do some tests and see what your results are like. I'd be interested to see what your thoughts are and see what your results are. If you want to leave them in the comments section, tell me what paste you've used and application methods and any differences in temperatures if you found any. Realistically, most methods, there's a very, very small difference and without using a specific thermal device to actually test, often the results can be just a fluctuation in the way that Windows is running or an update in the background, all those kinds of things, or maybe just a, a random task. So like I said, sound off in the comments, let me know what you think, but in the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll see you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.